Following the outlier section, we can go on to the distribution of exam results. Here you will need to consider the distribution of exam results in isolation, which is one variable analysis. You will then need to consider what factors may influence a student's exam result, and so this means bivariate relationships must be analysed, but these will go into the next section. To start, we can have an intro sentence plus something to indicate the focus of this section. For example, we could use, as par part of the goal to provide the best possible educational experience and outcomes, universities are always looking for ways in which to better understand learning so as to assist students to achieve their full potential. In this section, the final exam results for a cohort of students studying data analysis at QUT will be investigated to understand the overall level of performance. Make sure you include a reference to the chart, such as Figure 1 illustrates the distribution of exam results within the sample of N students being considered. You will, of course, need to replace N with the actual sample size. You would then include a histogram to visually show the distribution of results. Moving on, you would discuss the key features. Generally, a good summary of features will include things like average, lowest value, highest value, standard deviation and shape. It is also useful to note the modal class. Make sure that you do not just list these figures, but rather you need to tell the story of what is being seen and so the measures that you calculate should be used within sentences. The features then need to be put in context and linked to real life. For example, you could think about comparing the students with the highest and lowest results and what this means in terms of passing the overall course. You can also think about things like whether the students generally perform the same or if there are large differences and give some initial indication or suggestions as to why such variation occurs. Finally, a good concluding sentence for this section is to have a lead in to the next section. So something like, in the next section of the report, factors which may influence the exam results, such as gender, will be examined. Moving on to Excel, in terms of the Excel work, you will need to use the built-in functions to calculate all the numerical measures. I would recommend calculating all the measures, but then thinking about which are best to include so as to describe the key characteristics of the exam results data. You will also need to make a histogram to visually show the patterns in the exam results data. Create a pivot table and group the exam results into classes. Based on the amount of data we have, we may initially be thinking of, say, six to eight classes, but keep in mind that we want to create boundaries that are sensible for this type of data. And so we have to look at what we come up with and think about whether that will allow easy interpretation. Remember, you can just try some different class widths with the grouping in Excel and look at the results to help you decide what would be a good class width to use. Make sure your pivot table has a count for each class. Turn your pivot table into a histogram and don't forget to format it, including making the gap width zero.